I'm a 21-year-old woman who lives with two of my roommates in an apartment. We follow the same course in college and we all work, so we can afford the apartment and live somewhat in peace. I moved out the moment I finished high school because of how I was treated at home. I was struggling financially on my own until I found my friends. Now I'll explain the family part. Ever since I was a kid, my family would make sure that I knew that they weren't happy that I was born a girl and that my mom cried the first time she found out and didn't believe it until I was born. My mom would also say that she was very happy she could give my father a son who would continue the bloodline and that she would be devastated if she couldn't have her baby boy since she tried so hard to have him. Weird thing to say to me, but back then I didn't really understand, so whatever. My brother is four years younger than me. I remember that when I was a kid and family members would visit, they wouldn't even look at me, but they'd go straight to the boy of the family. My dad is an only child, so yeah, apparently my brother was a big deal. The worst thing is that my parents would ignore me. Sometimes it would go so far as refusing to buy me basic needs, such as clothes, medication, or anything if my brother would ask for something expensive. On my own birthdays, my parents would get my brother gifts with the excuse of, he's younger, so he'll get sad, and you have the cake anyways, and it's your birthday. But I was never allowed to invite my friends, because we had to invite his friends and the family, and it would be crowded and messy. He would often demand to have my things, shoes, phone, pencils, bags, jackets, and my mom would literally almost rip them off of me to give them to him. I remember that I refused to give him a paper house I made in fifth grade, and as a punishment, she cut all of my hair off. My teacher found out and she called my mom, and it escalated a bit. When we went home, she refused to let me eat food for a day, and would yell at me because I was breathing. I was never allowed to go on trips with them, because respectable girls don't travel. I don't know how they came up with this atrocity, but they did. I was only allowed to buy new clothes every two years, and had a tight budget for that while my brother got everything he wanted. If my brother wanted more food, my mom would take the meat off of my plate with her fork and give it to him, without asking. Once she tried to do this with cake, and I pulled my plate away, and she tried to hit me. But things didn't get more serious because my grandma was there, and she wasn't having any of that. My brother would hit me a lot, but if I even pushed him off, he would scream and cry at the top of his lungs, and my mother would slap me for making him sad, since he was just being a brother. After my paternal grandma died, her house went to my dad, and the men of the family were discussing who it should go to after my dad, since we already had our house that my brother would inherit. My maternal grandpa said it should go to me, but my dad's uncle got up and argued about how I was just a woman, and the house would end up in a stranger's hands after I'd get married. So they decided to give this one to my brother too. My brother grew up to be violent, lazy, and quite rude. My mother would beg him to tell her why he wasn't talking to her by saying, don't you love your mom? And it was simply because she told him not to leave plates in his room. I still remember the awkwardness of those situations as she begged for forgiveness as if she had done something horrible. Eventually, they made me move into the storage room which was tiny and took three days to clean out because my brother wanted my room because it was cleaner and had more light, but didn't want to move his computer and stuff from his other room. So now he had two rooms and I barely had any space to move. But this didn't bother me for long since I graduated shortly after and moved out. Now, after a good amount of time, my mom and dad called me and told me that they wanted to move to the old house because my brother wanted to live alone. But they couldn't leave him alone, and it would be nice if I sent him food on the daily and clean the house every weekend. I laughed and asked them if they were serious, since this was the first time they called me in a while, and that was the first thing they said. They got mad and told me I was mocking them and that they were right to not give me anything. All the anger I kept inside for years got the best of me, and I went off on them. I told them they could make a kangaroo pouch and take their man baby everywhere if they were so worried about him, since they spoiled him rotten to the point where he has zero life skills, and the fact that he is as stupid as they are didn't help. I told them I wasn't going to do crap for them or him, and to never call me again. Later that night, my mom calls me and tells me dad ended up in the hospital after what I said. I asked for proof, and she hung up. Later, my maternal aunt calls me and tells me that my mom is lying and that they are both over at her house for dinner and how they planned it in front of everyone to lie and guilt trip me. She told me it was messed up and I didn't have to worry to just focus on myself. Me and my friends have been laughing and honestly, I've been crying a bit over this. I just wanted to talk about this since I've kept it to myself for so long. Edit. 
I want to share with you guys a generous offer my brother made me. He said, you can move back in, but only if you stay in the small room again. Don't come out when I have my buddies over. Clean, and don't spend water and electricity. If the bills skyrocket because of you, I will kick you out. I don't know where he gets the impression that I would want to move back in that house, especially since he expects me to be a maid. He also made sure that I knew that I'd have to move out the moment he got a girlfriend, since he'd have her move in with him and they'd need privacy. At the end, he added, I hope you understand what I mean. I replied with, don't delete the text with the rules. You might need to forward them to your future girlfriend, since you're dense enough to actually do it. And I blocked him. It honestly is funny. I don't understand where this entitlement comes from. I obviously blocked their numbers, and somehow they found my friend's numbers, and they had to block them too. My mom found my social media and texted me, you have to send him food at least, because I can't move out in peace. Who do you think you are, disobeying me? You're going to hell for this. I've been cackling at this message, because I don't remember being born to take care of their mistakes. Not to mention that my parents will still live closer to him. They just want to put their irresponsibility on my shoulders. Apparently, my brother told them to leave since he was an adult and wanted to live as one now, with privacy. And they're still trying to blame me for the problems created in a household I haven't been a part of in years. At this point, it's hard for me to take them seriously, and I can't even bother to deal with them, so I just block them. Do not, I repeat, do not climb off this hill. This is a hill to die on. You are not responsible for their man baby. Go live your best life, OP. Of course they're not going to like it, because they aren't getting their way, so prepare yourself for that. But don't fold. Advocate for yourself, because nobody else will do it for you. You've got to be brave for yourself here. Sincerely, a big sister with a man-baby brother. Oh boy, your family sucks. They've been unfair to you for long enough. Do not take this parasite with you, because he will turn you into his new mummy. Your parents raised him. He is their responsibility, not yours. It is their job to provide for him and provide a future for him, not yours. Let them deal with the consequences of their poor parenting. And if it's gotten to the point where they are lying to you to try to make you do what they want, let them go. I would go no contact, but what you do is your choice. At least you have some nice friends. Also, your aunt has shown they are liars and manipulators. They said if you got the house, it'd go to some stranger. Isn't that what's going to happen when they're all broke or dead and gone, and he doesn't pay bills because he has no idea how, and he gets thrown out eventually, and house taken from foreclosure or whatever? <laughs> I'll never understand how parents think raising a grown infant is successful parenting. I did not know I was an affair baby until I was 32 years old. Growing up, my mom and I lived with my grandparents and assorted aunts and uncles. I never had a dad, and it was something that no one ever talked about. Because no one ever talked about it, neither did I. Somehow, I got it into my head that bringing it up and asking my mom about it would hurt her and make her feel bad, so I never said a word. I wondered sometimes, but my mom was such a sweet, loving, affectionate mother that it didn't bother me much. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything that mattered. Once, when I was in junior high, I overheard her and her longtime best friend discussing it all, and I ended up hearing his name. I memorized it, but never said a word about it. When I was 32, Facebook was just starting to be a big thing, and one day I got a message on my profile from a guy a few years older than me with his last name. It was my older half-brother. Apparently on his 21st birthday, he and my father had gotten drunk together, and my father told him all about me. He had sat on this for 15 years until he randomly searched my name on Facebook, and there I was. We started talking and I discovered that he was four years older than me and that I also have two half-sisters one seven years older, and the other is only two weeks older. The truth of the matter is that my father was my mom's closest friend at work. He was married, but having some major issues with his wife, and their little work group went out several nights a week for drinks after work and spent a lot of time together. One weekend, everything came to a head, and he decided to leave his wife, and he moved in with one of their friends. The next Friday, they all went out again, and he and my mom got drunk together, and they ended up having S. Anyway, the way it played out was that my mom got pregnant, and before she got a chance to tell him, his wife had announced her pregnancy to him, and they had decided to get back together and try again. My mom did tell him about me, but she told him she would be just fine without him and that he should fix his family. So, after my brother contacted me, 
I found out that my father and his wife divorced when I was around 16, but he never did look for me. Long story short, once we were in contact and getting to know each other, I discovered that my two half-sisters knew about me now, but wanted nothing to do with me at all, ever. I talk to my brother and my father often, and have been out to visit them both many times, and they have also been here. Unfortunately, neither of the girls have budged an inch in the years since. In fact, they now refuse to talk to my father and my brother because they have chosen to maintain relationships with me. And they blame me for that, because before they knew I existed, they were both very close to my father and brother, and they blame me for destroying their family. My oldest sister did contact me once, but it was only to ask me to please just go back where I came from and let them have their family, and that my existence is a slap in the face to them. They feel that my brother and father having relationships with me is a personal insult, and that when they made it clear how the sisters feel, they should have cut contact with me and walked away, because there is no place for me in their lives. They tried to make my brother and father cut contact with me. They gave them an ultimatum, them or me, and were absolutely shocked and crushed when they refused. They believed that they chose me by refusing to choose them. Now, I have a very close relationship with both my father and brother. My father and my mom have become close friends again, and my kids adore their grandpa and uncle. We do a lot of holidays and birthdays together, and I really feel blessed to have had my family expand this way. Both my father and brother have reached out to the sisters repeatedly, but they have made it clear that the only way to make amends with them would be to cut contact with me and my kids, and that isn't something they will even consider. Sounds like you got the crappy end of the stick here. I totally understand the sisters cutting off contact with their dad, but to blame you over it is really unfair. I don't understand them being angry with your dad and brother for wanting to have a relationship with you. I get being upset about the affair, but you were innocent in that. The circumstances of your creation are not your fault, and you are blood as well. I can understand the sisters not wanting to have a relationship with you even, but they shouldn't try to stop others from doing so. I don't think it's fair of them to ask him to choose. Your children are your children regardless of how they came about and any half-decent human should want to have a relationship with all of their children. Wow, what a story. Thanks for sharing. Glad you, your brother, and parents have found peace in all of this. Life is very messy. Hard to imagine what the sisters think they are gaining. What a superb lack of awareness to miss the irony of wanting to punish him for being a negligent father by demanding that he be a negligent father. My girlfriend is Malaysian. I'm American. We both live together in Malaysia and have for the past few years. I've spent Christmas with her family in Malaysia three years in a row. This year, we traveled to the U.S. to visit my family for Christmas. Our plan was for me to stay until mid-January, since I hadn't seen my family since pre-virus times, and for her to go back on the 28th so she didn't need to take too much time off work. I paid for our flights with credit card points, which required me to book two one-way trips for each of us. I booked us in business class both ways. My girlfriend had never flown at all before and was excited for her first flights to be in business class. Unfortunately, she complained about how it wasn't very nice almost every step of the way back. It was 26 hours of flight time. She complained that the bed wasn't comfortable. She said the food was terrible. She complained that the lounges were too busy. She even complained that the privacy partition and door at her seat on the plane were pointless since they weren't high enough and people could see over them. She also said the wine selection wasn't extensive enough. I told her it was still infinitely better than economy class, and she said, I doubt that. I actually wouldn't mind flying back in economy, since business was so crap. I tried to show her how cramped economy is and how little privacy she'd have, but she said business didn't have any privacy either. Seriously, save your points and just get me an economy ticket back. So I went ahead and downgraded her flight back to Malaysia, to save the 85,000 points difference, since she really didn't like business class anyway. While she was en route home, she texted me from the plane, saying, I can't believe you'd let me fly all the way back to Malaysia like this. This is awful. I reminded her that she said business class was also awful, and she said she wouldn't mind flying back economy, but she's still pissed and convinced I'm an a-hole for changing the flight. Am I the a-hole for changing her flight when I knew she'd hate economy class? She's convinced that I am. But I think that's a bit unfair, as she explicitly told me she wanted me to change her flight to economy, and she ignored my recommendation to look at what that might be like before I changed it. On the one hand, it was her first time flying ever, 
so it isn't like she had any point of comparison for how nice business actually is. On the other, she basically double-dog dared you to do it. Seems like she learned a very valuable lesson of duck around and find out, and hopefully won't make the same mistake in the future. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Firstly, business class is a treat, and your girlfriend was incredibly rude every step of the way. I hope she was better behaved during the rest of the trip. She told you to swap her return seat to economy, which is what you did. She comes across as an entitled a-hole. You've done nothing wrong. Not the a-hole. You did as she asked. She ducked around and found out because she refused to listen to you and apparently has nothing nice to say about anything. Three years? Is this her pattern?